Hey guys, your VO2 max, the maximal volume of oxygen your body can use, is a good indication of cardiovascular fitness and a strong predictor of longevity. A real VO2 max test involves exercising to failure while wearing a mask, but there are other tests you can do to provide an estimate of your VO2 max. Some of these are submaximal tests relying on a combination of performance and heart rate to then predict a maximal score. This video is about one of the maximal tests called the Cooper test. The Cooper test involves a 12 minute run with the goal being to run as far as you can in that time. In the original study, the 12 minute run was shown to have a strong correlation to treadmill VO2 max, and it's still one of the preferred tests for assessing athletes. If you can take this test on an athletics track because it is a flat, consistent surface and it makes measurements easy. A lap in lane one is 400 meters and there are often markings every 100 meters. So even without a tape measure, you should be able to judge your total distance to the nearest 15 or 20 meters. I appreciate that not everyone has access to an athletics track. So a close approximation can be made with a mobile phone's GPS and a relatively flat running route. As this is a maximal test, it requires a thorough warm up. I would suggest a minimum of 10 minutes if you're serious about running the best possible distance including some dynamic stretching, leg swings, and running drills. Once you're ready, line up on the finish line, start your timer and set off. Keep an eye on the time and when exactly 12 minutes has elapsed, stop running and make a note of where you finished. It's also important to count the complete number of laps you've done up to that point, And it may be helpful to carry a mobile phone for the GPS to get a rough idea of the distance that you covered. The formula for estimating VO2 max is very simple. There's no age, sex, or body weight input. It's just a linear relationship between distance run and VO2 max. Note the coefficient here means that roughly every 45 meters run beyond a baseline distance is equivalent to one unit of VO2 max. That gives you an idea of the differences you might see if you do this on a road with GPS. Not only could the GPS over or underestimate the distance, but you might cost yourself valuable meters by slowing down to cross the road or avoid obstacles on the pavement. I carried my phone with me on my latest Cooper test and it reported that I ran roughly 40 meters further than I actually did, meaning it would overestimate my VO2 max by almost one unit, which for most people is a close enough approximation. It's worth noting that this test is best suited to people who run or for sedentary people for whom running would be your preferred choice of activity. There are other tests conducted on exercise bikes or rowing machines if running really isn't your thing. As it's a maximal effort test, you also have to factor in motivation. Are you going to really push yourself enough that the result is a true reflection of your ability? Even if you're happy to do a 12 minute run, you might be wondering, how do I know what pace to go for a 12 minute run? Fear not, I have you covered. If you take the Cooper test formula and work backwards using either an estimated VO2 max from a submaximal test or your judgment for how well you expect to perform, you can gauge roughly how far you'll be able to run in 12 minutes. Using myself as an example, I recently did a one mile walk test and got an estimated VO2 max of 53.8. This chart allows you to get a rough idea how far you should be able to run with a VO2 max of 53.8. But if you want a precise answer, then use this formula here. The answer is 2,911 meters. Depending on how you like to think about pacing, you can then calculate an equivalent time per mile, per kilometer, or per lap. Personally, I like per lap, so I take 720 seconds, that's 12 minutes and seconds, divide by my distance in meters, and then multiply by 400 to get 99 seconds per 400 meters, which, as I said, is one lap of an athletics track in lane one. If you plan to run with a phone or wearable that reports your pace as you're running, it might be easier to calculate a pace per kilometer or per mile, which looks like this. Remember the pace only serves as a guideline, so don't be afraid to stray from it, both going faster or slower, if the pace doesn't feel right. As this is an exercise test, it comes with a word of caution. For certain individuals, exercise testing may not be suitable. This is particularly true for the Cooper test as it is a maximal effort test, so you're going to be putting your body under a lot of physical strain and you may aggravate uh, pre-existing health conditions. Anyone with any cardiovascular conditions, high blood pressure, orthopedic issues, severe respiratory conditions like asthma, anyone currently pregnant or experiencing any cold or flu symptoms at the time of the test should be especially careful. 
More generally, it's worth speaking to a doctor if you're in any doubt whether this protocol is safe for you to do. Once you complete the test, you'll probably want to know what your VO2 max score means. Here is the normative data for VO2 max by age and sex. This is just one data set, so it shouldn't be treated as a single source of truth. You can see it moves a lot by age. So a score of 50 is above average for a young man, but by the time he's retirement age, he'd do well to have a VO2 max above 30. A few reference points from the literature, a VO2 max of 25 would be roughly what you'd need to walk up a steep hill and 35 would be jogging at six miles an hour, which is slightly faster than a brisk walk. There is a very well established decline in VO2 max with age, and that happens regardless of fitness levels. The difference is that the fitter individual will have a higher level relative to the unfit individual as they both age. While this is quite an intense test, it would help to measure yourself every year and keep track of your scores. People typically lose around 1% of their VO2 max every year beyond the age of 30. So even if you're maintaining your activity levels, you will see a decline with age. However, your VO2 max is very much trainable if you're willing to put in the hours. This is particularly true if you don't currently exercise, which would put you at a greater risk as you approach 65 or older. I turned 30 in 2017, which is when the literature would suggest that I would start to see a decline. By increasing the amount of exercise I do, I've been able to reverse that trend, meaning last year I was fitter age 36 than I was at 26. Thanks for watching.